Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be solving two problems. Number 19 from the AMC 10A of 2020, and number 3 from the AMI 1 of 2016. Today, I decided to do two problems because these problems are nearly the same problem. In fact, they're so similar that when you go into popular solutions, many of the solutions from one problem often use the other problem as a solution. For example, if you search up the solution for number 19 from the AMC 10A of 2020, one of the solutions will be to refer back to the 2016 AMI and just memorize the answer from there because the problems are basically the same problem. On the test, I didn't realize this and so I had to solve it myself. So. It's for that reason I'm going to go over today, just to draw out some connections between these two problems and just show how to solve each of these two problems. Anyways, I have a lot of reading ahead of me, so let's just start. I'm going to start with the AMC 10A problem. As shown in the figure below, a regular dodecahedron, a polyhedron consisting of 12 congruent regular pentagonal faces, floats into space with two horizontal faces. Note that there is a ring of five slanted faces adjacent to the top face, a ring of five slanted faces adjacent to the bottom face. How many ways are there to move from the top face to the bottom face via a sequence of adjacent faces so that each face is visited at most once and moves are not permitted from the bottom ring to the top ring? So, how would we start this problem? Well, first, we're, uh, we're already just starting at the top face. So we have a set starting point. I'm going to mark it here. And then from this set starting point, we can go to five other faces. We can go to the, any of the five slanted faces adjacent to the top face. So that gives us five different, five different places to go from the starting point. So we have five. And then once we, once we land, at, on any arbitrary next face, there are several things that could happen. First, we could either move to this face and then go straight down to the next face, the next ring of faces, or once we get to this face, we could go around this ring of faces. We could either go one, two, three, four, to the right, or we could go one, two, three, four to the left. And then along with that, there's the case of just going from the top to bottom. So then there's nine possible options. We could either move one right, two right, three right, four right, one left, two right, two left, three left, four left, or we could just move down, giving us nine total options. Then, if you want to move down from one ring to the next ring, there's actually two ways to do so. On this one, let's say if we wanted to move straight down, we could either move, we could either move down over this side onto this face, or we could go over this side onto this face. So, going down from one ring to the other, there's two ways of doing that. Then, once again, we're, we're stuck with another dilemma, like the same kind of situation that we were on the upper ring. How many spots do we go before finally moving down again? Because there's nine places to go when moving from the up, when moving from the upper ring to the lower ring, there's nine places to go from moving from the lower ring to the bottom face. We can either just go straight from this from the lower ring to the bottom face or we could go one to the right, two to the right, three to the right, four to the right, one to the left, two to the left, three to the left, four to the left, or we could go straight down, giving us nine options once again. And then since all of these options are, are all independent of each other, we can multiply them all up. So we get five times nine times two times nine. Five times two gives us 10. 
And 9 times 9 gives us 81. So multiplying them to these two numbers together, we get 810 as our total as our answer for this problem. Now, let's go on to the Amy problems. A regular icosahedron is a 20-faced solid where each face is an equilateral triangle and five triangles meet at every vertex. The regular icosahedron shown below has one vertex at the top, one vertex at the bottom, an upper pentagon of five vertices all adjacent to the top vertex and all in the same horizontal plane, and a lower pentagon of five vertices all adjacent to the bottom vertex and all in another horizontal plane. Find the number of paths from the top vertex to the bottom vertex such that each part, part of a path goes downwards or horizontally along an edge of the icosahedron and no vertex is repeated. Well, this problem has lots of the same aspects as the previous problem. First, the arrangement of our paths is kind of similar. In this AMC Tan problem, we start, at the we start at the top face and then there was a ring of five different faces to go from there a ring, another ring of five different faces to go from there, and then we have our, we, have, we finally reach our bottom face. In this case, we stop at our top vertex, and we can go to a ring of five different vertices, vertices, and then once again, another ring of five different vertices before approaching our bottom vertices. And the rules of the problems are exactly the same, too. Just gonna underline the key parts. The rules of the problem are the same. In this problem, it told us that we cannot move from the bottom ring to the top ring, and and each face is, can only be visited once. In this problem, we can only visit each vertex once, and we and our path can only go downward or horizontally along the edge of the icosahedron. So, in both cases, the only one is going down and not repeating paths. So these two problems are essentially the same problem except that this one use, utilizes faces you have to find the paths between the faces well this one they want you to find the different paths along the vertices however if you just replace the vertices with faces we get the exact same problem in both of these cases and since the answer to this one was 810 the answer to this one would also be 810 but instead of just saying that let's actually solve the problem once again so, starting from the first vertex, we have a ring of five different vertices we could approach next, giving us an initial starting value of five. Once we hit our first vertex, we're left with the we start we approach the same problem that we left with the other problem. How many vertices do we want to move across the this ring before we move on to the next one? We could either move one, two, three. 4 right, or you could move 1, 2, 3, 4 left, or you could just move straight down, giving us 9 total options again. Once again, if we're going down, there's two different paths we could go to. We could either go to this vertex from here, or this vertex from here. Then, on the second ring, we could either go 1, 2, 3, 4 right, or 1, 2, 3, 4 left, or we could go straight down giving us 9 options once again. Multiplying it all up, we get 10 times 81, giving us a total value of 810, which matches up with our last answer. So in conclusion, these two problems aren't really that hard. But let's say on AMC 10A, you go and you see this problem. Even if you can't solve it using math, which is... Honestly, even then, it's the math here is quite simple. Like, compare it to lots of the other problems on this on AMC 10 that I've gone over with all those floor functions, ab like absolute values, scary kind of stuff. This is just simple counting, and you just have to be a little smart with the counting. As in this case, it's not as clear. Like, you can't just multiply two di two down. You have to take account for all the different rings going around. You just have to be a little creative with your counting. But what really shines in this in this problem is how paying attention to previous problems can help you succeed in future exams. People who solved, who knew about this Amy problem from 2016 didn't even have to attack this problem. 
they could literally just circle an answer and they would know it would be right because they could literally just replace the the vertices of the the vertices of the original problem with faces and get the exact same problem as the original and just like that they solve a problem instantly showing how this this experience with problems ultimately is probably one of the most useful thing to have on tests and it also shows that being careful and keeping track of which problems you've done in the past can also help you succeed on future exams so interesting thing to take away is just pay attention to problems you've already done because in the future if you get it wrong then in the future you should just not get it wrong again people who took the amy in 20, amy 1 in 2016 they may have got this one wrong but the first time but they shouldn't have gotten wrong the second time. So pay attention to the problems that you've done in the past. You've got wrong. And that's just how you become a better problem solver.